Right, so most of you were here last Black Belt class, you may have been, which was before I went on a night trip, so it's been a little while. Uh, I, I really don't like to rehash the same material twice. However, there was um, some bit of was at the end of that session that was okay, but I'd like to kind of touch up on it again. So we'll kind of almost piggyback right off of where we left off last time. This, so let's get to a turtle position, like so. Knees and forearms down on the mat, like so. Some of you may recall this pattern. If not, watch carefully. So I'm going to bring and start with the left leg moving. I'm going to kick back that left leg, a nice wide base, like so. Very important that as I do this, okay, that, uh, let's see, maybe this way. When I do this, that I do not kick back to the point where I'm falling back on my left quad, my left shoulder. So I don't want to go flat back this way. Here. You want to see the difference in the shoulder angle? Okay. A lot of activity with the feet here. So it's pressurized. I'm not turning this knee upward and thus falling back on my shoulder like so. Okay. We don't need to be too spread out. We're not doing like a, a plank quite yet. Just here is fine. Okay, let's start slowly. Left leg coming back. Ready? One. Back, let's do that again. You need to reach with that leg. Okay? So you should feel a real. So this is wrong. From a sense of like almost a point position. Everything? I'm reaching back. Big space here. Okay, you should feel very short. Your hips are floating. We're on the forearm or elbow, edge of the foot, ball of the foot. Ready. Reach with it. One. Please. Everyone see this angle of his knee? This is even okay, but you should have some angle like this. The more you're like this, the easier you are to take off balance. So we want to have pressure back in this direction. All right, ready? And one. Let's go to the left leg, Le uh, excuse me, right leg, I'm sorry. Two, back, three, back, four. So the feeling right now is you have to imagine that based on where you are right now, your buke will be in front of your chest, okay? So your pressure is going to be back in toward them. Other side, go. 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 Okay, back to neutral. We'll do the exact same drill. So, that we did last time, just in case we don't remember, we're going to underhook the arm right alongside him, and I can grab here or grab the gi or just press in, but I want to have control of this shoulder and chest. So, we're here. We're starting as if we've already kicked back. I'm going to reach over and then under and come back. Like so. As you move, put a bit of body weight on them, not all of your body weight, but transfer body weight on them. And then back onto your base. But I never totally lose weight on him. I'm not crushing him, but there's always that potential that if he were to try to sit up or bridge into me, right, that I can hold him down here or even come back to my Kamishiro Gatami. But for now, if he bridges in, we're just gonna press in and if need be, come here. This, questions? Pretty simple movement, most of us remember that? I'd just like to see it again. Yes, is this angle okay or you prefer change? So think like the pun grip here almost. So it's as if I've already kicked back one time. So that we're starting from there. Although you could easily start from exactly where we were. Kick back. Come through. Notice he plays ball with me a little bit. He lifts that arm. Through. At this point, again, I emphasize that the, not that I need him to bridge right now, but I emphasize that because this shoulder, this north shoulder, has to be engaged. If I step back, my knees 
just warm it up, you're just going to get up. Okay, so let me actually give you a first thing. If I do this kind of a thing, where my knee is pointed up and my shoulders like this, he could easily get up. The idea is to get that there's pressure back in his direction. This is awesome. All right, let's give it a go. I have material, I usually take it, but 
make like just make certain that you can do it that way. Like, I have material, but it's a t-shirt or whatever. You know, it, it's it's kind of like a Sony Siri Kimigoshi situation, right? Where I'm not grabbing the elbow exclusively. I'm also not grabbing just the gi exclusively. I kind of have this feeling like this. So I could go either way. You know what I mean? So when I grab, I'm here. Come on the other side, please, Tony. Grabbing, but he'll tell you, I'm, I'm on his body. I'm not this way. Right? So even when I have the gi, I, I still feel that connection with his body as I apply the technique. So I don't, I never, I guess what I'm getting at is, that is to say, if I just, I never just grab the gi. So I'm not just, just relying on the technology. I'm connected to him, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if the gi is there, I'll use it to help, help lever in. But you shouldn't be totally dependent on it. But if the tool is there, whether it's a t-shirt or a gi or whatever, go for it. Versus what would be happening in a fully integrated fighting situation. Okay? So, for example, right now, we're doing this in a very much in a katemiwaza framework. Grappling, like holding him down, locking his joints or choking his neck, and we're kind of stuck in that little world of grappling technique, like almost exclusively, yes? But in real life, we understand that while this is all happening, right, I'm probably, even these transfers, right, go okay, here, I'm probably gonna nail him, hit him, right? Just, mm, mm. All of that's gonna be happening all at once, right? So one of the critiques that happens sometimes is people say, well, you know, in real life, you're not going to be just grappling. That guy could reach for your groin or gouge your eye. Kind of ignoring the fact that you can do the same thing with them too, right? And you're in a better position to do that. But from a skill development standpoint, what often happens if you start incorporating the attenuants of the striking too early? Okay, so there's the real key point. You start to make it a first line of defense. You don't have that kind of nature of pure grappling. Right. You don't, you can't actually hold this guy down. You don't develop that skill. So meaning I'm here, and I go, yeah, but in self-defense, I just hit him. So now I overdo this, but he's out. And now he's on my back. Right? He chokes me, or whatever the case may be. Because I got a little too, what? Reckless with my positional control. Now, why don't I have the skill in the positional control? Because I didn't isolate that skill. Right? It's kind of like Tachiwaza Randori, right? In real self-defense, right? Boom! <clears throat> and I'm going to throw him. But when we Randori, generally, it's purely throwing, right? And so kind of you develop that real, really refined skill of thrower versus thrower. And if I can throw a black belt level Jukidoka with no other skills other than throwing, and he knows I'm trying to throw him, then when I can throw an elbow or a gouge his eye, it makes things much easier. But I have to develop that requisite skill. You know what I'm saying? Because what often happens in these things is people get a little wild on how they're going to hit him, and he's out. He's out of there. He's gone. So having that balance where I can use the what's called the osaikomi, the hold down, the pinning aspect, and then using the striking techniques and the rest of the grappling tech, or whatever nastiness we need at the right time. Make sense? So we're going to essentially drill the same thing, maybe soften the resistance just a tiny bit, a little bit, and I want you in the movement, find opportunities and positions where you can integrate your attenuate, your striking techniques, tetsu, tetsui, shuto, shote, hizagiri, and and integrate that in at the right moments without what? Without losing the position, right? So I'm not gonna go here and go, okay, now it's time. And he's out of there. Can that ever happen? Yeah, maybe if he's thoroughly hurt at that point. But if we're in the chaos of the struggle and this guy's coming up right now, I need to have still just hold him down. And then I'll find the moment to get it. But if I never get used to integrate, the, the problem is what? You can get too used to exclusively grappling. And now you're in a context in the real world where it's like, dude, why aren't you elbowing that guy in the head? So you're here, right? Let's say this way, and you're trying.
trying to do a kaku, and you're not getting it, and you're not getting it, but what are you missing? His face is right there. Use it, right? Adjust him with his hair. Shoot the hair. Right? And you can integrate all that in. This one. But on the flip side, what can happen if I do that all the time? Now I'm going to hit him, but I don't have really good control. So he's out of there with us. I'm going to help, but I'm not in a good position. Tighten your abdomen. I'm not in a good position to do any of this. And he's in a great position. Right? So now I go, well, I don't really need to be highly refined as a grappler because I'll just start hitting people and I gouge him and all that stuff. And it's not that that's not true. That stuff has to be integrated. And, the, and, and for people who aren't used to that idea, that notion, that definitely can be used against them. This, but the fact that you're only used to it in a purely grappling context can also be used against you as well. So what's the solution to the problem? The usual solution is what? Develop. Have a balance of both. Have a balance of both, but, yes, but, because ultimately all of it needs to be integrated, right? Throwing, striking techniques, positional control, joint lock, all of it needs to be integrated. The guy pulls a weapon, right? All of it needs to be integrated. But, because we're kind of generalists in a sense, but when you're training a specific skill, the fundamentals have to be built almost exclusively in that domain, right? So I do normal throws. I do walking back. Nobody's throwing a punch at me. Nobody, it's just kind of pure. I do standing randori. It's just throws. But I can get stuck in that mode, right? So now I'm the baddest dude in the dojo as far as randori, and I think I'm the best at self-defense. But there may be vulnerabilities so, uh, because I'm just not training with, with that in mind. What? Does that make sense? Um, on the flip side, you could you could always kind of use the crutch of, well, I could strike him or eye gouge him or do the nasty stuff and allow that to kind of be a reason for why you're not actually very good at the skill set oh. to begin with. Oh. So mm -hmm. you need to be in a position where no matter how you're holding this person down, Let's say he starts to get out of here or whatever. I don't, I don't want to go, okay, I'm going to elbow him. And now, what's that? I lost position. Right? On the flip side, I've got him really, really well. And I, but I, I, meaning, when I say got him, I got him well in, in what respect? He's not getting out of here. You know, I'm messing around with this. I'm messing around. And then I'm so, I'm so grappling oriented. Okay, and again, I lose position. Or what, and what I could be doing is what? Now it opens up, or maybe I don't even need it, right? Or maybe I'm going to elbow him with this one, but what do I need to have? Positional control, knowing how to transfer weight, right? You feel, you feel, you wrestle, right? So, you so I'm here, get out of there, please, get out. Really hard, right? Really hard. But I have to have that positional control so that when I decide to throw those strikes, he's, he's essentially planted. You can't just squirm out of here. Is that making sense to everybody? Yes. So, play in that same zone. Here, we start, Hajime. And a lot of times, again, here, what did I just do? Open up too big. Too big. Wrong time. Maybe I even hit him, but I've lost my position. So, maybe your strike becomes a little bit more rough. Short, tight. I kick. The moment, but I never lose the control of the situation, right? Until the time is right. I hit him. I control him. I, I, I'm not getting crazy when I'm here and bridges and I'm, well, again, especially when we're always considering that what? He's bigger than you. He's bigger than you. So your positional control. If you decide to exercise that or you need that skill set, better be really sharp. And you won't develop it to a really sharp level unless you're used to just in a pure grappling context holding that person down. Once you're confident that you can do that, you always continue to refine that, but you never, you also on the flip side have to integrate the other skills as well so that they don't just become something you don't even consider. Okay? Yes. So we're still playing in that semicircle. Yes, correct. 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 Yeah. But again, maybe he tries to grab your leg with his legs. 
right? Maybe, maybe now he's getting nasty. So for example, right? I can hit him, but he can reach for my eyeball. Right? He can reach for it. He can put that in. So I gotta, I gotta account for all that. I can't be like, oh, he's gonna do a pure technical defense. Maybe he's not, right? Or maybe he does that with a finger in my freaking eye, right? Oh, now, and I've never considered that. I'm always used to the, the gamesmanship of he's gonna try to hook a leg, and he's gonna use just leverage to get out of here. You follow what I'm saying? So he can get a little nasty, and you, can, you gotta just be used to the, the, the stimulus of, I mean, if he reaches for me, right? And now, reach for my eyes. And just kind of get used to not just the pushing and pulling, the rolling and trapping, but the smacking, the reaching for the eyes, maybe someone grabbing your hair, and account for all those little nasty things that will happen in a real life encounter. Especially when people get what? Desperate. And you're holding, you're holding down a big guy. And in his mind's eye, yeah, he won, weighs 150, you weigh 190. Um, he feels like he should just be able to chuck this guy off, and he can't. And he's going to start reaching for throat and hair and eyes and ears and groin. And you gotta, you got to account for all that, right? Makes sense? I can't be lazy here, and he chokes me, or he reaches for the groin. I, I got I to gotta account for all that stuff. This, does that make sense? All right, that's right.